Welcome to a new video from Illustrator, and today I'm going to show you how you measure the standby power consumption of products. A lot of devices consume electricity when they appear to be turned off or inactive, such as your TV or your microwave oven. This power consumption is known as standby power and can be a significant contributor to product energy use. The standby power of household electronic devices is typically very small, but the sum of all these devices within the household can become significant. To be able to measure the standby power of products, I first need to explain several concepts. First, I need to explain the difference between real power, reactive power and apparent power. All components have some internal resistance, so each part will consume some active power or real power in watts. However, reactive power is the dissipated power resulting from inductive and capacitive loads measured in volt amperes reactive. The apparent power or VA is the real power combined with the effects of reactive power in volt amperes. Regardless of whether you're using AC or DC, the real power would still be the same as resistive loads act in the same exact manner with either supply. Capacitors act as open circuits, while inductors act as short circuits for DC signals. But in AC, they add a complex component to the total power. What you're actually paying for is how much active power is being used over time, which you can normally see on your kilowatt hour meter. You can calculate how much kilowatt hour is being consumed by a device while in standby by multiplying the measured active power by the amount of time in hours this device is plugged into a socket while in standby and then divided by a thousand to convert watts to kilowatts. The ratio between the real power and the apparent power is called the power factor. The lower the power factor, the more power is being consumed than is actually needed and thus is wasted. When the load is ideally resistive, the power factor is equal to 1. If the power factor is lower than 1, then that means that there is reactive power. The apparent power can be calculated by multiplying the RMS current and voltage absorbed by a device. RMS stands for root mean square and can be calculated with this formula. The RMS is basically the equivalent DC value of an AC waveform and can be measured for instance with a true RMS multimeter. Since AC signals can be noisy due to other noise sources, true RMS is needed to take reliable measurements. True RMS is more accurate than just RMS because it takes the noises into account. Standby power is usually measured with a power meter or a power analyzer. However, accurately determining the standby power usage of a device involves a lot more than just a simple measurement of power in watts. First of all, you're dealing with low power and currents, so you need to have a power meter or a power analyzer that can measure accurately in these low ranges. Furthermore, at low load, the current is often extremely distorted. But now I want to show you several ways you can try to use to measure the standby power consumption of your devices. Let's start with this Unity UT210E current clamp. This current clamp can measure the true RMS voltage and current flowing through a cable, so only the apparent power can be calculated. However, the current through a power cable cannot be measured, since it will measure the current flowing towards the device, but also the current flowing away from the device, so they counteract each other. Otherwise, you would have to strip your power cable so you can measure an individual wire. Furthermore, a current clamp cannot measure the real and reactive power, and therefore also not the power factor, so the difference in the real and reactive power can be significant. We can also use a true RMS multimeter with a special connector that can measure besides the RMS voltage and current, also the active power, the apparent power and the power factor, for instance with this Unity UT71E. But we can measure the real power with a power meter without cutting the power cable, like with this Matrix MPM1010. 
This power meter can measure, for instance, the RMS voltage, the RMS and peak current, the active power and the power factor. In this socket on the right, you have to plug in your power cable, which you connect to a power outlet in your home. And in the socket in the middle, you connect your device you want to test. The left socket is the power socket that will supply power to the device that you want to test, which will be again with the power cable connected to a power outlet. When we keep the load disconnected, we're only measuring 230 volts with a frequency of 50 Hz from the power outlet. But when we connect the device to the power meter, we can see there is some current flowing even though the device is not being used. Furthermore, the amount of real power is much lower than the apparent power we were measuring on the current clamp, because apparently the power factor is far lower, which means that there is relatively a lot more reactive power than real power. If you want to completely analyze the device, you can use, for instance, a power analyzer. This power analyzer can even measure things like the total harmonic distortion, the crest factor, and much more about the signals you're measuring. We will make a video about the use of a power analyzer in the future. To summarize, I've explained what standby power consumption is, and that it can be a very big contributor to the total amount of electricity used within a household. Furthermore, I've explained several important concepts such as real power, reactive power, apparent power, power factor and true RMS. Lastly, I've shown several methods you can try to use to measure the standby power consumption of your devices, of which using a power meter is the easiest and best method to use. For full analysis of your devices, you should use a power analyzer. But now, I want to thank you for watching and I hope to see you at the next video.